How's everyone doing? Hope you're good. Hope you're well. Hope you're prosperous and, and living, living your best life. Every now and then I kind of take some time to talk to, talk to you, you know, especially my audience, my subscribers that have you know, honestly changed my life. And I'm so grateful to have you. I really am. And I've had a lot of messages over the last three to six months from people, people concerned about me, my health, my well-being, things they've noticed, um, my behavior on camera. And I always said I would address it when I kind of got to the bottom of things. And that was more about not tempting fate than anything else. It's, it's been a horrendous, her, personally a horrendous six months for me with terrible ill health problems all over my body, which, which I'll kind of go into. And it all really stemmed back from November when people remember I, I had to shut a stream down because I had severe chest pains. And it, it never really went away. Although I was being given diagnosis from doctors, oh, it's a trapped nerve, or actually it might just be a, you know, a little bit of acid reflux or X, Y, or Z. It, I continued to get worse o over the course of time. And, and by kind of the middle of January, I was having chronic stomach pains, consistent chest cramps and um, heart palpitations on a regular basis. And I honestly didn't know what it was because I was having multiple ECGs and tests on my heart and they were telling me it was okay, but couldn't explain to me why I was having these, these problems. I then started ha having real bad problems with my stomach um, without getting too gross or detailed you know i was there was passing of blood so obviously then the doctors start to examine me for cancer which obviously something as sinister of that is scary i've got three young children and that was my real biggest fear was leaving my babies behind and and not being around to to bring them up and it's just been a very hard and very very difficult time one that has damaged my my mental health to a level that I, I never thought it would get to, to a point now where according to the, the, the doctors and the people I've been speaking to, I've developed, it's got a number of words, but health anxiety and something I never knew existed until fairly recently, which is cardio, cardiophobia, which is essentially the fear of sudden death from a heart attack. Even though my heart is as healthy as it can be, I've had every blood test imaginable, scan imaginable, ECG. I've had x-rays of everything. I've had cameras up and down my body. And the great news is I am well. The long and the short of it is that there's a few very minor things I have which are very treatable. They're not sinister, and I'm going to be okay. But it kind of got me thinking, how did this six months become so bad why was it so difficult for me and i put it down to being in some respects a typical man in many ways because what i have got i spoke to my brother about now I spoke to my dad about i spoke to a few close friends and lo and behold most of them have the same or similar things or have been through very similar conditions that are not sinister but they're a little scary at times and i'm sitting there and thinking why has everybody got this why are a lot of men my age going through this and we're not talking about it? How have I allowed something so trivial to become something so serious? And of course, I've spoke through this with my doctors and, 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 and a therapist that I'm currently seeing to really help me through this. Because when I say I've become, and this is something that's hard for me to speak about, but I wanted to do this in case any, any of you are going through this, any of you are feeling like this, any of you are suffering with this. If I catch a hair on my t-shirt, but if recently, if I catch a hair and get a little pinch on my chest, that would send trigger warnings to my brain and could, could lead to a panic attack. I could be sitting on strings fine and then get a little bit of oh in my chest. Suddenly I'm sitting there and I'm touching my pulse and I'm feeling my chest and I'm sitting there on a live stream. Or I could be driving my car or I could be looking after my children or cooking food. And I honestly sit there and believe I'm about to have a heart attack and I'm going to die. Sometimes I've been able to calm myself down. And there are other moments where I'm just gone and I have to call an ambulance because I am absolutely convinced 110%, no matter what the test results say, I am about to die. And what the therapist has said to me and the doctors have said to me is that sometimes this is more typical with people that have never really been ill. 
And I've never had more on the cold in my whole life. So suddenly having six months of constant stomach aches, chest pains because of the gas that's come out of the stomach. And I'm just un unfortunate that when the, the gas leaves my stomach, it just sits in my chest and it hurts. I also, throughout the course of this, when I was being tested for cancer, had cellulitis in both my legs. And people wouldn't realize this because Jess was helping me. I was practically bedridden for three weeks. And the only way I was able to work was to sit in my office chair and have Jess will me from room to room. And I didn't want to stop working because one, it was one of the only things that generally took my mind off things. And two, I've still got children to feed, so I have to work. I couldn't sit around for six months and earn no money. It was impossible. But it's been an horrendous, an absolutely horrendous six months. And thankfully, as I say, we've got to the bottom of everything. And there are some real physical issues, but ones are very treatable, very easy to cope with, very normal of somebody of my age. I suppose the disappointment I have in myself was my inability to handle being ill and the panic that set in, the confusion that was there, the not knowing. So not knowing what the issue was scared me more than anything. And when I went through periods of having the cellulitis twice in the last six months during these chest pains and stomach pains, I've had two really serious chest infections. All of this of which the doctors have said is because of the stress and the panic and the anxiety I've had my immune system's been lowered. It's just led me to feeling like genuinely I thought I was on my way to dying. And I haven't been able to get that out of my head, whether it was from an instant death or a heart attack or a sinister illness like cancer and, and, and passing. You know, I'm 37, but I'm still young in the grand scheme of things. It's been, it's, been, it's been terrible. And I wanted to talk to you about it today because I care about my community. And I would say I probably had anywhere between 500 to 1,000 messages from you all. I tear of notice you grabbing your chest a lot, touching your, touching your pulse, kind of notice you're not always yourself on streams anymore. And it's all been to do with this. And I wanted to take this time to address it, but also to say if anybody else is going through this, don't do what I did and leave it until only last month to start speaking to people about this. Start speaking to people earlier to help you cope. Because although I'm very lucky and I'm so happy that after all my tests, and I had about six or seven different tests for cancer, They've all come back clear. I'm so relieved and I'm so happy that that's the case. The pressure of going through that and not talking about it for my mental health ruined me. Absolutely ruined me. It's a hard thing for me to sit here and talk about. I don't even really want to sit here and talk about it because it does make me feel a bit weak. It makes me feel a bit vulnerable. And putting this out there is a difficult thing for me to do. But if I can help just one person not go through what I've been through, and some days, in some moments when this was going on, some of my thoughts were dark. They were dark. They were painful. And I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. It's, it's truly been one of the worst periods of my life. But thanks to you, the terrorist community, although some of you give me a lot of stick every single day, you really have. A lot, along with you, my family, my partner, Everybody around my brothers have really helped get KJ, has been amazing through this, have really helped me through it. But that you as a community, I've got a lot of love and time and respect for you. And as I said, if any of you are going through anything like this, constant pains, coughs, firstly, get them checked out by a medical expert. Don't just assume there's something not, not dangerous. You have to go and find out. But if you're starting to feel stressed and you're anxious and you're staying awake at night, go and speak to somebody, talk to them, learn. Breathing exercises, way to change your, 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 your thoughts. What's really helped me is I was keeping a diary in the last month and writing down things I was thinking, how I was feeling. It got rid of the anxiety. With the anxiety being gone, I feel less ill. Now I've had the all clear. I've not had a chest pain or a stomach pain in two days now. Like not one. Six months constant, now none. Which also shows, although there are real, some real little issues, anxiety can amplify anything you're going through. But as I say, get medical attention first, get everything checked out, get all the tests done. The NHS is brilliant. And they were, honestly, they looked after me brilliantly. Get that done, but speak to people. Speak to your friends, speak to your family, open up, be honest, let it out. Don't hold it in. Because I'm being honest with you, if, if I carried on doing that, I wouldn't have got through this. It genuinely would have ruined me. It really would have ruined me. But I want to thank you all so much for the, the messages and the, the kindness. 
and the outreach, it, it, it means so, so much to me. And look, no matter how strong you think you are, it doesn't matter what your background is, where you come from, whether you're a fighter, a sports person, a businessman, or whether you're someone that doesn't feel like that. Maybe you're someone that feels a, a lot more vulnerable. You're someone that feels a lot um, less able. You can get through these things, but talking about it and opening up is the only way. Listen, people, um, back to football after this video. But you know that this community means everything to me. I will see you all again very, very soon. Take care, peeps. God bless. And, and we'll speak again soon. Bye-bye.